I actually have told people every single person on the planet needs a Carrot Bars account. There is not one logical reason to not have this account. Well, everything in my life is down to Harold Sites. I can't say any more than that. It's got the biggest heart of any human being I've ever met. Harold Sites is one of the most generous, caring, loving, giving, spiritual men that I have ever met in my life, and I will follow him to the end of the world. I'm with him till the end. I think Harold's heart is bigger than this, this world, and I love how he just keeps giving and giving and giving and giving, and he always, always, always looks at how he can make a difference in the world. And his company's not the best company in the world, but we're gonna be the best company for the world. And we're gonna go out and change the world and make a difference. We're gonna go from success all the way to significance. And that's because of his great leadership. I'm looking for freedom. Freedom from the system. Freedom. And it's very important, the word freedom. Everybody has the right to be free. To be free. We can accomplish anything. We're capable of defining success for ourselves. Harold Seitz is an extraordinary human being. He is a, first of all, just an incredible person. And he's not only a tremendous, good, loyal and straightforward person, but also the best CEO I know on this planet. My name is Harold Seitz. I'm the CEO and owner of Carrot Bars International. And this is obviously a banknote that now encompasses what money should encompass. And it's an alternative to the payment system that we have at the moment. Because a lot of people have lost faith in the dollar, lost faith in the euro, and the alternative is gold. If anything should happen in the financial sector to the dollar, the euro, or paper money, paper money is worthless, in the next few years, and I'm convinced it will be in the next four or five years, then those people we have in the system who buy gold will be protected. And that was the first goal I wanted to achieve with my company. I started with small denominations, 1 gram, 2.5 and 5 grams, because that makes it affordable to everyone. In my opinion, you have to speak to the masses, so I spoke to the masses. Worldwide, we have customers and business partners in 120 countries. In the meantime, it's become a few more. To date, there are 600,000 people who are either customers or business partners. Success is also being able to concentrate, to focus on one thing. And you have to find this one thing, the thing you're passionate about. It's not easy to find something in life that's both fun and you're passionate about. But success is also giving something to somebody else and offering someone an advantage. And this principle is called give and take. And this principle is give and take. The definition of success, incidentally, is really fascinating because it used to be that a lot of people equated success with extreme wealth. There are a few that still have that dream today, but only a few. The definition of success is what you yourself want it to be. It has nothing to do with wealth. Neither does it have anything to do with recognition from the outside. It depends on your own goal. And it's important that you're clear about it, how you define success for yourself. That's a good question. I think that's a question you have to think about in reverse. Success can obviously be material success, but you can also measure success in terms of immaterial values, in personal satisfaction. Ultimately, I think that individual success is defined when you look in the mirror every morning and you're happy with everything you've done with what you've achieved. Even if you're satisfied with what you've achieved, you can still achieve a little bit more. I simply am how I am. I'm a natural person. I help people. If, for example, someone, there are people who have disappointed me, and later they hit a low point, and I've still helped them. It's a question of give and take. I like to give, and I also get something back. 
Most people don't understand this principle, that first you have to do something, to take action, to give something before you get something back. Because if I don't use my skills, I can't succeed. And that actually applies to everything. I'm someone who believes in fairness, and if something is unfair, then there aren't many situations where I become emotional, but in this case, I can get emotional. And I believe in justice, which is also reflected in my business. Success has its own very interesting rules, and it has nothing to do with firewalking, but how you begin to question success. And one day I came across a really interesting story, that success, what does it depend on? On the right education? On the right means? Go to Silicon Valley and you'll find it's a building block, but that's not the real success. I have another theory. You can reduce success to a single second. One second decides whether you suddenly see an opportunity in the eyes of a customer that he himself doesn't see. One second decides whether you want to be successful and change your career. I'm convinced you will always come to a fork in the road in your life. It's pretty much always been the way that people have said, him, yeah, he can't do anything anyway. And that always gives me motivation. My name is Jutta, and I've been working here since January 2014. He also knows the other side of life, how someone can hit rock bottom, how quickly someone can fall. He's never forgotten that. And despite everything, he's not just this arrogant boss, but he's remained human, human towards his employees as well. Childhood wasn't so easy. We imagine a boy with thick spectacles, who was an outsider at school, at home a single mother, a grandmother at home with alcohol problems. You say yourself, a child with a migrant background, a father from Greece, who at some point disappeared. If you have nothing, no point of reference, someone, for example, a father, an entrepreneur and so on, to show you how things work, then you have to make mistakes in order to learn from them. There were people at school who explained everything to us, what you can do. Then I went to college and I realized I can't let myself get trapped somewhere and smothered. And that's how it was. That's why I left this apprenticeship very quickly. And the problem was that my mother and grandmother in the meantime, my stepfather as well, told me that I should learn an honest trade, do something respectable, that a trade can give you a decent living. I was talked into it again, and I started an apprenticeship with my father, who was a painter, and I have to say, that wasn't a good fit for me. It just wasn't my thing. So I quit that apprenticeship, and that's when I got into direct sales. Deswegen habe ich auch diese Lehre verlassen und habe dann ähm, erst zuerst mal äh, den Direktverkauf kennengelernt. Selling vacuum cleaners for Vorwerk. That was the first thing I ever did in direct sales. And I thought it was phenomenal for people to be buying vacuum cleaners from me on their doorsteps. I wasn't unsuccessful at it either. Because at the time, I was earning something like three or four thousand Deutschmarks a month, and that was a lot of money back then. Drei und viertausend D-Mark manchmal im Monat verdient, und es war sehr viel Geld damals. Er hat recht klein angefangen. He started very small and also fell flat on his face a few times with ventures that didn't work out. And he got into debt and really hit rock bottom. I trained as a financial advisor, and of course I worked really hard at it. And I had around 12 to 14 appointments a week, and as a result, I was successful at this as well. We gave people advice about their pensions. Then I started my first company where we sold fund policies, which was still a bit more interesting than life insurance, and it was somewhat more modern. 
because you can earn greater yields for customers. Und die war etwas moderner, weil man da noch mehr Rendite erwirtschaften konnte für die Kunden. I built the company up to 50 people. We were making 10 million a month, and it was all going well until the crash and I lost everything. And I was left with a mountain of debt amounting to 250,000 euros. And afterwards, because the insurance took everything, I had about two or 300 euros left with which to start all over again. How do you motivate yourself to get up and start over? A lot of people have asked me that, by the way, over the course of 36 years. How do you manage to stay so successful? My first answer has always been, who told you that I'm always successful? I'm convinced that success is a series of ups and downs. Sometimes you're up, other times you're down. It's important when you're down to stay focused on the light at the end of the tunnel. And one of my great mottos is, when one door closes, another one opens. In retrospect, there are many things that I hated at the time, but then later I understood. It was just being shown a new path toward other things. And obviously, after a situation like that, you're feeling completely battered. So then I sat at home for at least a week, and I got thinking, what should I do? So I got some office space from a friend, a room in his own office. It was in Königstrasse in Stuttgart. That's the street where all the shops are and I started a company for a hundred euros in England, something I'd already done before, and I did the rounds for four to five hours solid, and I earned between six and eight hundred euros. During that time, I did that for three years, I managed to pay off my entire 250,000 euro debt, of course with settlements, and I was free and clear. completen Schulden von 250,000 Euro, natürlich mit Vergleichen, zurückbezahlt und war wieder frei. What goes on in our heads? What can we accomplish with success? The path doesn't always go straight to the top. The path turns left, turns right, doubles back. And sometimes you can really take a pummeling. And it's at these times that you need to be able to stand up and say, okay, today just wasn't my day. I've said it often enough, but tomorrow will be the day I continue along my path. That's really the attitude you need to get to your goal. Incidentally, this is how all inventors have thought. They've doggedly stuck to their guns, despite however many monkey wrenches are being thrown into the works. I think that's a very central, really important lesson. To accept that you won't always go straight to the top with success. The important thing is how you deal with it. You've been involved with the precious commodity with gold since 2011 and have invested in it. What prompted you in 2008, 9, 10 and 11, or however long ago it was, to create your company? What was the inspiration behind the idea? I can tell you, when I was 19 years old, I was working in the financial sector. And back then, when I sell something, there has to be a passion, and I have to believe in it. And when I saw how it was 2004, I think, when insurance companies had to disclose their costs, and I realized, how can you invest in something when essentially you lose half? And I thought about it. What's the alternative? And I decided gold was it. Because at the time, there was the currency, and I formulated this plan. Then I gave it some thought. What kind of product on the capital market could be good for people? And I thought about gold. Why? Gold is money. Bin ich auf das Gold gekommen. Wie? Gold ist Geld. Wenn man sich anschaut, wie der When you look at how the dollar came about in the 1860s, when the gold miners went to the banks and said, I want to deposit my gold with you because it's too dangerous. Because back then, they got shot and their gold was stolen. So, that's how it was back then. And that's why the gold miners went to the banks and deposited their gold. And in return, they were given a certificate. 
To cut a very long story short, it was this certificate that eventually became the dollar. And in kurz form, this certificate was irgendwann einmal the dollar. I'm Harold Zeitz's sister, and I work in gold production here at Carrot Bars. What exactly do you do here in gold production? My husband and I produce the cash gold. We have bills that we embed with 0.1 grams of gold. I've been incredibly impressed by what he's achieved. He started this business in 2011. And the more he told me about it, the more enthusiastic he got, the more enthusiastic I became. To be honest, I didn't believe it at first. Er mir erzählt hat und je begeisterter er war, konnte er mich dann auch mit begeistern, ja. Und also das war für mich schon ein ich habe ich habe es ehrlich gesagt erstmal nicht geglaubt. Ja, jeder muss seinen Weg gehen. Ja. Yes, everyone has to follow their own path. It's not an example to say, okay, you can go precisely this way. But I'm trying to say that you always, whenever you have your sights set on something, and if you enjoy it, and if you say, okay, this is what I want to achieve, that you can do it if you just stay focused and don't get instructed by quote-unquote friends who don't mean it in a bad way, who say, oh, that's impossible or won't work. If you're motivated and want to achieve something, then of course it's possible. If we accept that success starts in the mind, then the first thing we have to do is tell ourselves that there's always a way and that we have the strength to make it happen. This is a very high form of self-motivation. And then to be able to say that I'm capable at any time of finding the way, that represents enormous self-belief. And that is one of the most important prerequisites, that there is always a chance always a way and always what I call a resource to see this. That is very closely connected to our own attitude in terms of how we deal with ourselves. We can accomplish anything. We're capable of actually defining success for ourselves. I'm the perfect example. What happened to me should never have happened. But from the start, I decided I would say, in my mind, there will always be a solution and the solution will come. It might not come right now, not straight away, but it comes. And you never stop, do you? You have to keep going somehow. That's why cryptocurrency is such a big topic for you. Yes, in 2017, my business stagnated a bit, so you have to ask, why? What's the reason? And everyone, or at least a lot of people, are moving into cryptocurrencies because greed devours the brain, because they thought they could get rich quick. And I looked into it, and I realized how great it would be to combine the crypto market with a blockchain, to produce a gold coin. And I acted immediately. And within three months, between November 2017 and February 2018, I had brought out a coin. From November 2018, 17, auf February 2018, I had a coin brought of these companies who all launched an ICO in 2018 following the Bitcoin boom, 1,000 have already disappeared and they were still afloat in 2018. 200 committed fraud, so it's obvious just how tough this sector really is. Absolutely, yes. You really have to be very, very careful. And I think you have to go back to fundamental companies like ours because I've been on the market since 2011. We have continued to evolve. And I decided to produce a coin because it's my plan to develop a financial system based on gold. I think what Mr. Zeitz is doing is really exciting. And it's not just a pipe dream because he's already gone and done it. He has already created a cryptocurrency or a gold-based coin. And I've known Mr. Zeitz for several years. He's very interesting. He's not your typical startup entrepreneur. He's an experienced businessman who managed a very, very classic business, very successfully, before learning about and making use of this new technology to transform and expand his business. And he did it in an innovative way. What he has created as a private entrepreneur with the gold-based currency, you can now see at intergovernmental level to the extent that governments issue virtual currencies, cryptocurrencies that are gold-based. 
So he really is a pioneer in this area. Gold is freedom. Gold is freedom. If you have gold, you have money. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a lot of news today for you. The people, they, they know me from 2011. Everything, what I promise you, I did it. I did it. Banks, exchanges, and gold mining companies will unite with one goal to create the gold independence world, which will bring stability and prosperity for everyone. What I will present you is the real facts, the real future for you, for us all together, for us families, and for all generation, for next future, for next 100 years and more. Whatever you have in your pockets, forget it, because we have a better one. We have our own operating system. We invented the first voice over blockchain smart. I did it. It's incredible. I mean, it's a you do. It's magic. Just a lot of love, and that's what makes this so special. With all his businesses, or what would you say, businesses he started, he has gone from strength to strength. He's grown stronger and stronger and has never given up on himself. He has always believed that one day a business would come along where he would eventually be successful. I admire him for that to this day. I could never have mustered so much strength. The title of one of my most important lectures is Nobody Can Win Alone. No one is capable of being permanently successful on their own. And especially during a crisis, it's important to have people around you who believe in you. The exciting thing is, Bill Gates was not alone. Steve Jobs was not alone. The people around you are the key. They're the ones who help you follow your path, who believe in you, who motivate you who say, even if things go wrong, even when you find yourself staring at the wreckage, I believe in you, and you will go on to be even more successful than you've ever been. What is success? I'm convinced that success is when you can one day take stock of your life and you can say that not only have you achieved something, you've also helped other people to improve their lives a little bit as well. I think that would be my definition of success. The organization deals with socio-critical films, films that can't really be shown because they can't be financed. And for sure, we have to expose what's happening in the world today. And that's why it's something that is really very important for all of us. For the future, we have a very, very big project planned that's still incubating in my mind. I'd like to build pipelines and desalination plants in Africa. I will free up considerable resources so that this project can be implemented. Just imagine, people have nothing to eat. We can't imagine how much the people there are suffering. That's why it's important to me that people all over the world have at least the very basics, that's to say food and water. What is a gold digger? No, seriously. What is a gold digger? Is it someone who believes that it's out there? Yes. Someone who wakes up every morning and believes and believes and believes that it's out there? And then there's nothing, right? There's just nothing. And then he finds himself standing at the edge of a desert and staring at a new sunrise. And he hears a gentle voice, a gentle voice that tells him, go on, keep looking. And the sun keeps on rising and beats down on him from above. And it's searingly hot. He has no more water to drink. And everyone that came with him 
wanted to turn around. And at some point, they did exactly that. And so, he's standing there all alone. And all he has left is his belief that it's out there. And yes, it is out there. That's 